the SAC Storytelling Room at the San Francisco Free Folk Festival. And this is either the third or the fourth year that we have been doing this at the festival. Um, I'm Brandon Spars for, Sarah says, I'm Brandon Spars, I'll be your co-host. The other host is Stephen Chagrin, better known as Shags, who's doing all the tech for us today. And uh, I just wanted to say a little bit about SAC, the Storytelling Association of California. Among other things, it's an umbrella organization to swaps all over the state of California. And so one of the benefits of being a SAC member or affiliating your swap with SAC is that SAC can provide Zoom as a platform for your local swap. So if you are interested in pursuing that, we already have three or four swaps that are doing this. If you're interested in doing it, you can get more information about that and other benefits of being a SAC member. So um, join, and there's information about how to join on the website. Um, later on in this program, during intermission, we're going to have a brief remembrance of a storyteller named Jeff Byers. He was going to be with us today telling, but of course, earlier this spring, he became very ill and he passed away just three weeks ago. And so uh, during intermission, there will be a set of pictures that will be rotating and we might have a moment of silence for him. I also want to acknowledge the times that we are in. Of course, we're not in room 230 at Everett Middle School, which is where we would be for this. And that is because of the social distancing that is in place due to due to the coronavirus. And on top of that, we're in the midst of something that is gaining in scope and significance in history right now, and that is the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, I just wanna talk a little bit about that. For some of us, it might feel a little bit luxurious or even privileged to be laughing and enjoying ourselves with stories. Um, especially when others out there are demonstrating and really have their own lives at stake. But I also want to acknowledge the power of storytelling. I believe a good story, whatever it's about, can give the listener whatever he or she needs in the moment. And as a ninth grade teacher, sometimes what you need is sleep. I know that in my classroom, they just go right to sleep. But uh, sometimes it's a gift that we only understand much later, a story. And I trust that each and every one of us will go away as better people from today's event with a deeper understanding of things that happen in our world. Most importantly, maybe as better listeners and of course, having our ability for empathy invigorated and strengthened over the course of the next few hours. I'm very, very pleased and honored to be introducing Pamela Reinagel. She's going to be spending the next hour sharing traditional folk songs about surprising things that can happen when you're just going for a walk. Brandon, I accidentally muted you. Sorry, you have to unmute yourself again. Brandon, can you hear me? Yeah, how much did we lose? <laughs> Just a couple words, I'm sorry. Okay, well, I'm introducing you. So, um, ambulatory adventurers, or adventures, sorry. So Pamela um, performs traditional unaccompanied folk ballads sourced from the oral traditions of the English speaking world. And uh, originally hailing from Buffalo, New York, she now lives in San Diego, and I was very impressed to learn that she graduated with a PhD from Harvard in biochemistry, and you are a professor of biochemistry at UCSD. And in addition to being an accomplished artist, you are a scholar. 
So I am going to turn it over to Pamela Reinigal. Please join me in welcoming her. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for that introduction. So um, as Brandon just explained, the idea for this program was um, to share with you some of the many, many folk ballads who all begin with someone just going innocently out for a stroll. And it's amazing in the world of folk balladry, almost anything can happen to you when you're just out going for a walk. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of witnessing something, uh, a little episode of domestic grief or a satanic conniving or a mystical vision. Um, or you might find love at first sight or find a total stranger wooing you. Um, and there's love stories, of course, that end in tragic separations and some that end in happy unions and actually also some happy separations and tragic unions. Um, and a couple with even more um, dangerous and exciting events. Um, and the texts of these songs uh, span history from the 1430 to one that was only documented in the 1930s. So we're spanning actually five centuries of history. Let's go for a walk. <laughs> As I, I'm sorry, excuse me for a second. <laughs> As I went out walking one fine summer morning, the birds in the bushes did warble and sing. Fine laddies and lasses in couples were sporting, going down to the factory, their work to begin. I spied one amongst them, more fairer than any. Her cheeks were like roses that none can excel. Her skin like the lily that grows in yonder valley. And she was a hard working factory girl. I stepped right up to her, more closely to view her. When on me she cast such a look of disdain. Young men have some manners and do not come near me. For although I'm a poor girl, I think it no shame. Oh, it's not for to scorn you, fair maid, I adore you. Pray grant me one favor, say, where do you dwell? Kind sir, you'll excuse me, for now I must leave you, for yonder's the sound of my factory bell. But I have land, I have houses, I adorn them with ivy. I have gold in my pockets and silver as well. And if you'll come with me, it's a lady I'll make you. And you won't have to heed that factory bell. Oh, it's love and temptation are our ruination. Go marry a lady, I hope you do well. But I am 
an orphan without friend or relation. And for by I'm a hard working factory girl. And with these words she turned, and with less she has left me. And it's all for her sake, I'll go wander away. I'll find some deep valley where no one shall know me. And it's there I'll mourn my factory girl. Wow. Well, that's the factory girl. Um, and... Uh, from here to something completely different. Uh, if you've ever heard of the saying, speak of the devil, you know that when you speak of the devil, he's liable to show up. Uh, another superstition about the devil is that if someone curses, may the devil take you, um, then the devil has for a moment the permission to come take you if he wants to. And, and those are um, both referenced in, in this song. Mm. <clears throat> As I went out walking last summer to take in the view by the sea, a couple of rogues out a rambling before me I happened to see. Now to learn what these boys might be up to, a trifle I hastened my walk, for I thought I could learn their profession if I got within range of their talk. Now one of these boys was the devil, and one was the bailiff McGlynn. And one was as vile as the other, and both were as ugly as sin. Says the old boy, says he, I'm the devil, and you are a bailiff, I see. Is it the devil himself, said the bailiff, well, that beats the devil, said he. Just then a young boy ran out of a cottage and took off right over the hill. May the devil take you, cried his mother as she threw a few stones at his heels. Well, why don't you take the young rascal, your highness, the bailiff, he cried. Oh, it was not from her heart that the wish came, the devil, he smiling, replied. Then nearby in a patch of potatoes, a piglet was striving to dig, and the owner came out and she shouted, the devil take you for a pig. Well, that's now a mighty fine offer, why not take the piglet, said he. Oh, it was but with her lips that she said it, and that's not sufficient for me. Then a boy up the road saw them coming, and into his mother he fled. Oh, mother, the bailiff is coming. And she clasped her two hands, and she said, May the devil take that awful bailiff. The old boy said, Bedad, that'll do. That was straight from her heart that came surely. So, Bailiff McGlynn, I'll take you. And from there. Um, so that's called The Devil and the Bailiff. And um, uh, it's from Ireland. Um, and the next song, um, which takes us to the 16th century, is uh, a song about uh, the impulsiveness of youth. The provost's fair daughter was walking alone. All oh, but her love, it was easily won. When she spied a Scot prisoner making his moan, and she was the flower of Northumberland. He said, oh, if a lassie would marry with me. Oh, but her love, it was easily won. I would make her a lady of high degree if she'd loose me from my prison so strong. So it's she's done her duty in her father's good stocks. Oh, with her love it was easily won. 
And she's stolen the best key to many's the brave lock. And she loosed him from his prison so strong. And then she's done her duty in her father's good stable. Oh, but her love, it was easily won. And she's stolen the best horse that was both fleet and able. For to carry them both to bonny Scotland. But when they crossed the border, he turned and he said, Oh, but your love, it was easily won. Get it down from this horse, you're a brazen-faced whore. Although you're the flower of Northumberland. Oh, it's cook in your kitchen, I surely must be. Oh, but my love, it was easily won. For I dare not go back to my own country, where I was the flower of Northumberland. Well, it's cooking my kitchen, you never could be. Oh, but your love, it was easily won. For my lady would never have servants like thee. So you'll have to go home to Northumberland. For it's I have a wife in my own country. Oh, but your love, it was easily won. And I can't do a thing with a lassie like thee. You'll have to go home to Northumberland. But then he's taken pity on this lassie so young, although for love it was easily won. And he's hired an old horse, and he's hired an old man, for to carry her safe to Northumberland. Well, when she got there, her father did frown and say, oh, but your love, it was easily won to run off with a Scotsman when you're barely 16. And you were the flower of Northumberland. When her mother came in, her mother did smile and said, oh, but your love, it was easily won, but you're not the first girl of Scotsland beguiled, and you're welcome back home to Northumberland, where you will not lack bread and you will not lack wine, although your love it was easily won. You won't lack the silver to find you a man, and your eyes, a fair flower of Northumberland. That was lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going back to things that you overhear or see when you're just going for a walk. Mm -hmm. As I went out walking, I heard a complaining, and I saw an old woman, a picture of gloom. She was sweeping the mud off her porch, it was raining, and these were her words as she wielded her broom. Oh, life is a toil, and love is a trouble, Beauty will fade and riches will flee. Pleasures will dwindle and prices will double and nothing is as I would wish it to be. There's too much of worriment goes in a bonnet and there's too much of ironing goes in a shirt. There's nothing repays you the time you waste on it. There's nothing stays with us but trouble and dirt. Oh, life is a toil and love is a trouble. Beauty will fade, riches will flee. 
pleasures will dwindle and prices will double and nothing is as I would wish it to be. Well, there's dusting at six and there's sweeping at seven, then cooking at eight and there's vittles at nine. Then we're potting and panning from 10 to 11. We scarce finished breakfast and we're ready to dine. Our life is a toil and love is a trouble. Beauty will fade and riches will flee. Pleasures will dwindle and prices will double and nothing is as I would wish it to be. Last night in my dreams I was banished forever on a far distant rock in the midst of the sea. My sole occupation, a constant endeavor to sweep off the waves as they swept over me. Oh, life is a toil and love is a trouble. Beauty will fade and riches will flee. Pleasures will dwindle and prices will double and nothing is as I would wish it to be. Alas, was no dream when I woke I could see it and I knew I was helpless my fate to avert then she put down her broom and she folded her apron and she laid down and died and was buried in dirt oh life is a toil and love is a trouble beauty will fade and riches will flee Pleasures will dwindle and prices will double and nothing is as I would wish it to be. Okay, so from the ridiculous uh, to something else, uh, the next one is one of the very large number of ballads in the English speaking traditions. Every country and region has them about a long, uh, a long, absent lover returning from war or from sea um, and coming to his lover in disguise. And then this one uh, comes from Ireland again. As I went out walking one morning in June to view the fair meadows and the heather in bloom. I spied a pretty fair babe, she appeared like a queen, in her costly fine robes, and her mantle so green. I stepped up to her, put her in surprise. I own she did not know me, I being in disguise. I said, my fair creature, would you come with me? We'll both join in wedlock, and married we'll be. She answered, oh no, sir, I must be excused. Or I'll wed with no man, so you must be refused. I wander the green fields to shun all man's view. Since the lad I love dearly went to famed Waterloo. Well, since you will not marry me, won't you tell me your love's name? For I fought in that battle, I might have known the same. Draw near to my garment, 
It's fair to be seen. His name is embroidered on my mantle so green. She lifted her mantle and was there to behold. His name and his surname in letters of gold. Young Willie O'Reilly appeared to my view. Oh, he was my chief comrade in famed Waterloo. Your love and I fought where the bullets do fly. And on the field of